<laughs> well, hello and welcome. I hope everybody's had a good week. I hope that all your loved ones are doing fine and you yourself are doing fine and doing well. This week I want to talk about remaining faithful. Striving to be faithful to our good Lord Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. Amen. Remaining faithful means that we are constantly on a day-to-day -day basis without regard is to be faithful to our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. To be the example that Christ himself had set before us. Now on this channel it's called One Day at a Time. And that's how we should live our life, is one day at a time. Not to get overwhelmed thinking about the future or worried about the future. God watches over us, especially his children. He watches over us. Be it little or much, like I've always said, God takes care of us. We should learn to be content. Content is a powerful thing. Just to be content with little, if necessary. There's nothing wrong with having little. But what's most important is to be content. It's a powerful thing. Combined with patience and wisdom and knowledge of that which is truly good. These are great and profitable things for us, the children of God, to practice on a daily basis and not to be drawn away into the world doing worldly things, lusting after more, 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 focus on having more. There's nothing wrong with working hard and having things. God blesses us. There's nothing wrong, and I've said it before, what we earn, that is our portion. God has blessed us with that portion, be it little or much. But we should seek to try to be content. Amen? It's a powerful thing. But today, and being content, and being patient, and being long-suffering with others, helps us to remain faithful. Amen? These are practices of being content and being patient and being long-suffering with those around us. Be it if they speak evil or do evil, family members, friends, husband, wife, whatever, we should be long-suffering with them praying for them, being an example unto them for our Holy Father, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, to be that example of the love that He has shown us. <sighs> the more and more that I read Scripture, and I have asked y'all, and I continually will ask you to read Scripture, Pray for understanding, but be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. Amen. And I'm going to try to continuously press that every time I make a video. If we truly love our Heavenly Father, we will do His will. We will live a life that is well-pleasing unto our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ did when he came here in the flesh. He came to do our Father's will, his Father's will. And he fulfilled it perfectly, without spot, without sin. He performed, he lived his life as we ourselves should live our life 
here in the flesh on this earth. Amen. And we should be more focused. Another thing that helps us to remain faithful is to remain focused. Main, remain focused on our Heavenly Father and His will and our Lord Jesus Christ and His will and live it every day. There's times that we're going to slip backwards, backslide. I hope not. But if there's times that we do these things, we should correct ourselves right away. As soon as we feel the Holy Spirit telling us to change our ways and consider what we're doing or what we're thinking, then we should turn away from that right away and repent of it. It's a way that we can live a faithful life, a faithful life here in the flesh on this earth. Amen. Now, this is a beautiful area up here. Now, I got the camera right into the sun, but now it's going in behind the, the pine trees. <laughs> it's going in behind the pine trees right now. So maybe it's not too bright. But then when you look out here behind me, there's a mountain scenery back here behind me. I don't know if you can make out the mountains back in there. But it's just beautiful up here. It truly is. It's a beautiful place. It's kind of like a little mud hole right here that I parked out here on the side of the street. But, oh well, it is what it is. <laughs> we got a little pickup truck. We'll, we'll be all right. Um. Uh, but there is nothing more fulfilling. And I fall, I have fall in my life, I have fallen way short of all this. And I'm ashamed of myself, and I can admit it. God says we should confess our sins one to another that we might be forgiven. And plus it helps be an example. That sun's shining right in my face right now. But that's okay. We should be an example. And I have fallen short of that, like I said, in my life. There was a time I probably read and studied the Word for two and a half, three years. I mean, every day. I love the Lord and I still love the Lord very much. And I became very engulfed in the spirit and God's word moving me I could feel the power on a daily basis regardless of what I was might have been uh, suffering it's, it doesn't matter bills pain uh, family problems it didn't matter I still hung on to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father and I remained in his bosom but then some things happened in my life that I s slowly started sliding away. And I regret that. I regret it deeply. I did not maintain that fateful walk on a day-to-day -day basis. I allowed myself to seek after pleasure in this world. And I can admit that. And that's why I can tell you as a witness of someone who has done these things, maybe some of you have done these same things, we should turn away from these worldly things and stay focused on our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit is a comforter that God has given us, His Spirit, to comfort us and guide us and encourage us and help us. And when we read the Word, and I've taught this before, I've said these things before, we need to read the Word and pray for understanding. We need to have that understanding in our own hearts. We need to have the Word in our hearts so the Holy Spirit can help us, can guide us, and we know we're not ignorant to the ways of the world, the way of Satan. That we won't be tripped or fall into a hole or backslide. 
And if we do start to do these things, we can catch ourselves. The Holy Spirit can catch us in these times of weakness that we might want to slip back into the worldly ways or start thinking things we shouldn't be thinking. The Holy Spirit can grab a hold of us and warn us. And God can deal with us like children. And I've said it before, there's, there is no greater feeling and experience of having God deal with me. It proves to me, shows to me that He loves me. He deals with me as a child. He lays heavy on my heart at times. Even of late, He lays heavy on my heart. We are not perfect, no. But God asked us to be perfect, to strive to do that which is holy, that which is good, that which is acceptable before God and man. Be that example. Be that shining light on a hill like this here. Be a shining light up on this hill for the world. You don't hide it. Being faithful, remaining to be faithful, truly loving that which is good, sound doctrine, reading scripture that we might learn how to please God and how we should handle certain situations in our lives and even answer the questions that we might have. We're not given all the answers even Paul says that we look like even the hereafter and everything that God's doing, it's like looking through a glass dark, like a dark glass. We can make out some of it, but it's not quite clear. There are such great magnificent things that we can't comprehend right now, not in the body, not in the flesh. And there's probably things, and I say probably, and that's probably, you know, <laughs> it's uh, the way I see it, is God gives us the knowledge that he knows we need. Compared to God, we're just babies. We're infants. Regardless of if we read every word of Scripture and we lived our life to the T from the day that we accept our Lord Jesus Christ, even if we live a perfect life from there on out, we're still like babies. Amen. We should never, Christ says himself, there's nothing wrong. He was talking to some of the disciples, some of the people around him. He was like, there's nothing wrong with thinking yourself equal to me, but never think yourself above me. Amen. And I'm sure that's how Christ sees our Heavenly Father. They are one. God loves Him dearly. And God loves us dearly. But just as Christ would never, ever think Himself above God like Satan did. Now what's, that's what Satan's problem was is that he wanted to be worshipped. He wants to be God. But Christ would never, for eternity, Christ will never, ever, ever think himself above the Father. Amen. And I, I don't even want to think myself equal to Christ because I know I'm not. I know I'm not. He wants me to think that I'm worthy of salvation because he gave his life. God has given his son. He doesn't want us to think that we're worthless, that we're not worth anything. That's Satan that pushes us down like that to try to make us think that, oh, we're worthless, we're nothing, nobody loves me, I can do nothing wrong, I mean, I can do nothing right, everything I do is wrong. That's Satan digging into your mind and putting those thoughts in your head. Now, there are some of us, even me included, I feel that way. 
I feel like when I start to do a task or do something, I start thinking about it, it's like, well, I don't have the knowledge or the means or I'm just worthless. <laughs> or I plan to do something and it just doesn't work out the way it, I, 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 I saw it to work out. And I'm like, well, I'm just worthless, you know, or some a loved one might say something that's hurting me you know depressing me because they've said something hateful and mean to me and i start to think well man is that really me you know i mean like i start doubting myself and of course if we have wronged somebody then we should repent of that we should apologize for that we should approach them and apologize for it sincerely apologize and repent from that but what i'm pointing out is we are worthy of the salvation that God has given us, that God's freely given us, the grace and the mercy. He has redeemed us. He has bought us back from the dead. He has paid that ultimate price. He has given his life on the cross, shed his righteous blood for us to redeem us back to God. And we are a servant unto God, our Heavenly Father. He calls us children, but we should be servants. Just as Christ was a servant unto us when he came here, he was a servant to those who were walking around when he was walking around in the flesh. He served them. He healed them. He saved them. He taught them. He suffered them. He freed them of demons. Amen. He came here as a servant. And we likewise should be servant unto others for his glory, for his name's sake, that we might show the love of God to others, to our neighbors, to strangers, to our co workers, to our family members on a daily, daily basis, on a day to day basis. We should remain faithful, bury our heart into the spirit not live a fleshly heart anymore or the flesh anymore not to please the flesh anymore but to please the spirit of God to please God himself to do his will and there is nothing more pleasing to God as far as mankind is concerned is if we do love one another we are kind to one another we are charitable we help our neighbors we help strangers we speak truth to one another We've had a car coming to speak truth to one another to be long suffering these are the sacrifices that God wants us to show him in his name. Show him that we love him. That's how we show we love him, is to do his will. He hates sin. Christ hates sin. Christ hates, and I mean hates, evil, wickedness. He hates idolaters. He hates drunks and, and drug addicts and adulterers and fornicators. He hates people who reject him and God's will and even goes against the natural things of God, which God made man and he made woman. If a man goes off with another man, that is an abomination. That shows you right there, they do not know God. They have no knowledge of God at all. They are just pleasing the flesh. It serves no other purpose. They cannot breed. God didn't design them to breed and have children. So it's just pure lust. Same thing with a woman. When women go with women and lay with one another, it is just about lust. 
They serve no other purpose. It's not a natural thing that God has designed them for or created us for. It's an abomination before God. It's even a sin for a man to dress like a woman. And it's a sin for a woman to dress like a man. Amen? That's why I need you and ask you, and you need, you definitely need, if you are not reading Scripture, you definitely need to start reading Scripture and understand God's will. But more importantly, is to get to know God by reading His Word. By understanding his words and his process and his thoughts and his will, we get to know him. Christ says, if you know me, you know my father also. They are the same. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Christ came to set a perfect example for us to follow. And we can do nothing without Christ. No one can go unto the Father or go before the Father or have the Father without Christ. We must first receive our Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the Son. We must receive the Son before we can go to the Father. These are great and wonderful things. But I ask you and myself to work towards being faithful on a daily basis. It is much easier to love others than hate them. Hate will eat you alive. Hating people for no reason will eat you alive. Now we can hate what they do, but don't hate the person. Amen. Pray for them if you have to. Be an example. This channel is called One Day at a Time. And we are to live our life, as I said earlier in this video, one day at a time. But we are to seek to please the, our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Seek that joy and that happiness. We, I'm guilty of this too. We all look for different ways to be happy in this world. Well, if I just work real hard and save some money, I can start a business or I can build a home. I can buy this property over here. I can buy that new port, that, that new pickup truck or that new bass boat. And you ladies, well, well, I can buy that wardrobe or we can buy this home and this furniture. <clears throat> Setting our hearts on stuff that is not going to make us happy. And if it does, it's only going to be temporary. And if you're borrowing money to pay for all that stuff, it's going to be miserable at times just trying to make the mortgage and make the payments on that house and those cars and that furniture and those trips. The best thing, and I'm guilty of borrowing money and I can admit it, I'm guilty of that. And I become a slave to whoever it is who financed my vehicles or my home, whatever. I become a slave to them. I should have stayed, and that's what I'm saying, I admit it earlier. I gone back into the world and fleshy things, trying to please the flesh. I should have just, whatever money I made, then buy whatever I can drive. Amen. 
or whatever money I've made, rent a place to live. I don't have to own it. We're only here for a short season anyway. But if I do buy a home, I suggest that y'all buy the land first and go from there, pay as you go. Even if it takes you 15, 20 years, pay as you go. So you're not a servant to anyone in this world other than to our Lord and our Heavenly Father. Amen. But what I'm trying to say is seek that joy and that happiness that's in our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, in His Word, knowing that we are living to please our Heavenly Father. We are conducting ourselves in a godly way, in a holy way, in a righteous way, in truth. Seek that joy that's in the Lord, in our Heavenly Father. That joy and that happiness is never ending. As long as we remain in Christ, as long as we follow our Lord Jesus Christ, as long as we allow Him to empower us and discipline us as children, if we allow Him to do these things through the Holy Spirit, we find great joy and happiness that we will not find anywhere with anyone, even getting married. There's a lot of people who get married thinking, oh, he's going to make me happy. Oh, she's going to make me happy. Unless you have happiness within yourself, a peace and a contentment in your own self, and I hope it's based on God and not some worldly thing or some other person, but when we use God as the foundation of our life and our happiness and our joy and our contentment, it's never ending. Even through the hard times, Christ and our Heavenly Father never change. They're the same today as they were yesterday, and they'll be the same in the future. Amen? They're never changing. His love for us is for eternity. The Holy Spirit that we have is for eternity. Christ, our Lord, is for eternity. So when we base our happiness on serving God and the joy of being a child of God, when we base our life on Him, when we get married, I hope there's no disappointments from your mate, your wife or your husband, but there, there will be. Most and more than likely, there will be disappointments. <laughs> There'll be times when you don't even want to talk to each other. And that's unfortunate, but it happens. But if you work together, no matter what the problems are, other than adultery and all of that, but if you are patient with one another, content in the Lord, being content with what y'all have, what God has blessed y'all to have, and you seek to please each other, serve each other, and think about each other, and pray for each other, then you can build a strong marriage. It's a covenant when you marry someone. And not putting our happiness and joy into, the, into our wife or our husband. We can enjoy and have happiness with them. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. But your true joy, your number one joy and happiness, your heart should be based in God and His Word and His will and serving God. Amen? And doing His will. That way, 
you still have that happiness and joy even when someone else is disappointing you or even upsetting you or even hurting you because they're not meeting certain needs but as I said a couple of weeks ago people who have been married 50 years 70 years They'll tell you, I mean, there's very few that don't have dry spots in their marriage, hard times in their marriage. But they stayed committed to each other and they would work through it. And most of them will tell you it just only made their marriage even stronger and made them stronger as individuals. As a married couple, they were stronger and also as individuals. They were stronger. They came out stronger, more knowledgeable. Amen. When we read scripture, we are warned, and I mean warned, about remaining faithful. Not to be backsliding, not to be sinning, not to go back into this world serving ourselves pleasing ourselves we are warned of, ab about these things we are to serve God in the spirit and, and not serve the flesh any longer amen so it is imperative that we stay focused on a day to day basis one day at a time on our Heavenly Father and His will for our life. Amen. Let me turn this around here. There's a helicopter up there. I don't know if you hear it or not, but it's up there. <laughs> It is just beautiful out here, people. It really is. It is beautiful out here. The wind's blowing. I don't know if there's any wind on the mics picking up wind or not. And if it is, I, I apologize. I do. I need to find me one of those wind muffs or whatever they call them. But what I just hope that you will continue reading the word of God. I always ask that you read the King James Version and pray for understanding. And God is faithful to give us the understanding. If we truly want to know him, he wants us to know him. He wants to help us. He loves us. I mean, he's given his son for us. That's how much he loves us. But if we just continue living our life day to day, not thinking about God and just worried about what's going on in our life, trying to have something, work. If all we're doing is working to try to have more and more and more and not focused on the people around us or God's will in our life, then we can do nothing of ourselves, by ourselves. We have to remain as Christians, as children of God. We must remain in our Lord Jesus Christ for us to be fruitful and to have eternal life. Amen. Now I ask that you pray for one another. Pray for the leaders of our lands. Pray for the missionaries. And focus on living one day at a time, doing the will of God at all times, no matter what. Do his will. It's all muddy out here. <laughs> but this is uh, some area they have clear cut. Looks like they clear cut it back a little ways. But it's just a beautiful view out through there. beautiful country up in here
seek the joy of serving God, our Heavenly Father. Find that contentment. I accidentally cut this thing off. I had to splice it together. <laughs> but find that contentment and patience in serving God. And be patient with those around you. Be patient about having things. If you're working towards something in your life, it'll come. Don't let it wear you out, worrying about it, trying to achieve it, whatever. Take it one day at a time and still focus on God and His will. Don't miss opportunities to help other people and witness to other people. Have your heart focused on serving others more than ourselves, huh? Amen? That's important. And, and I encourage you to heed to what I'm saying here. I want you to read the Word or listen to it even. There's Bible apps. That's what I do. I listen to the King James Version Bible app. I was listening to some when I came up here. I was, I was listening to Jude and I was listening to, to the beginning of Revelations. Pulling up in here. And Jude was giving a warning to people about false prophets. That's another thing that reading the Word is very important that you're not fooled or I'm not fooled by others that we know the word ourselves I cannot do it for you I can encourage you I can talk to you until I'm blue in my face about God and his will but it is up to you to build that relationship with our Heavenly Father we who are believers, we who are a child of God, we sh should invest our time in building that relationship with our Heavenly Father through our Lord Jesus Christ and the help and support of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I do hope y'all the best this upcoming week and God willing, We'll talk next time. <laughs>